The results-driven Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce invites you to connect your business with a thousand other companies just like yours, including education and workforce development, health care, professional services, manufacturing, retail, nonprofit, trades and vocations, hospitality, among many others. And benefit with chamber programs and services such as government affairs, energy and economic development, small business assistance, networking opportunities, women in business programs, young people in business programs, and more. We invite your business to become a starring member of the Merrimack Valley Chamber today and see what a difference this chamber will make for you. Join your community's most trusted, effective, and relevant business network connection today. The Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> We will ask uh, Representative Linda Dean Campbell, a veteran, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Representative. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. give them a round of applause and thank them for their service. I'd like to introduce Mike, please have a seat. I'd like to introduce Michael Bevelacqua, who our Chamber Vice President, who will provide the greetings and also uh, recognize our sponsors and our elected officials here. Okay. Good morning. As Joe mentioned, I'm uh, Merrimack Valley Chamber Vice President Mike Bevilacqua. I want to say welcome to everyone today. Thank you uh, all for who served and who continue to serve today. Um, I just want to welcome a few of the elected officials here to, who were able to attend this morning. Welcome to Essex County Sheriff uh, Kevin Coppinger, Representatives Christina Minacucci, Marcos Devers, and a veteran herself, Linda Dean Campbell. Senator, uh, from Senator D Diana DeZoglio's office, we have Callie as well. Uh, Lawrence Police Chief Roy Vasque. Congress, Congressman Seth Moulton, um, his veterans case worker and district aide Steve Bone is here as well. And um, I want to thank our sponsors of this program as well. Um, you know, whenever we talk to these companies about being a sponsor, they jumped right up and said, we want to support this important program, so thank you. I want to thank our title sponsor, Merrimack Valley Credit Union. Um, I know John Howard is a veteran himself, so I want to say thank you to John, the President and CEO of Merrimack Valley Credit Union. I want to thank our associate sponsor, Wooden and Curran. And I want to thank our friend sponsors, uh, the Merrimack Valley Chamber Means Business Program, as well as Merrimack Valley DOT exams. And DOT exams is actually offering a 15% veteran discount on our exams during November as well. So if anyone's interested, you can see Maria today as well. But um, with that being said, we have a uh, congresswoman. Um, Laurie Trahan could not be here today. She wanted to make sure to say a very special thank you to our veterans, so we're going to play that video now. Hi, I'm Congresswoman Laurie Trahan. This Veterans Day, I want to take a moment to express my sincere gratitude to our veterans and their loved ones here in the 3rd District and across our country. When our nation needed you most, you stepped up to serve, and each of you has sacrificed so much to defend the freedoms that we as Americans hold so dear. For that, we're forever thankful. As we commemorate your service today and the service of heroic veterans who are no longer with us, we recommit ourselves to keeping the needs of every veteran and their families at the forefront of our policy decisions. Over the past year and a half, we worked hard to ensure veterans have the support, resources, and care they've needed throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. We've made tremendous progress on the veteran suicide crisis, which continues to claim too many lives each day. And we're continuing our work to end veteran homelessness, which pushes those who bravely served our nation onto the streets because they can no longer afford to keep a roof over their heads. 
But we cannot and we will not stop there. Together, alongside each of you, we're going to build on that progress through historic investments in our veteran community by rebuilding veteran affairs hospitals and outpatient care facilities, investing in the VA workforce, and making much needed updates to the community living centers that serve our oldest and most vulnerable veterans. Each and every person who answered the call to serve deserves nothing less than our full support, and that's what we're going to deliver. So thank you again to our incredible veterans, our active duty and reserve service members, and all their families. We're so grateful to you today and every day. Thank you. And I want to welcome uh, Representative Linda Dean Campbell, a fellow veteran as well, who will be uh, saying a uh, good morning as well. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Linda Dean Campbell, um, and I, um, I'm currently recently chair of the Committee on Veteran and Federal Affairs in the Legislature. Perhaps more importantly, um, I was chair, just finished serving as the, um, the chair of the committee that investigated um, the tragedy at the Holyoke Soldiers' Home. Um, we spent a year on that investigation and published a very lengthy report that went far beyond the Pearlstein report, and that is now being uh, turned into legislation. Uh, I filed a bill with Senator Michael Rush, and that is now under consideration um, in the legislature. So as a veteran and a uh, spouse of a combat veteran, I just want to say thank you for your service uh, to our country. Um, veterans are truly bringing our country together in many ways right now. And certainly, that is so very much needed. Some other things that are going on in the state legislature are legislation to help family members who serve in the military, who come here to Massachusetts, and their family members sometimes have difficulty getting licenses or certifications to work. And this is a big morale issue uh, for the military, because you come and you touch and you go, um, and then in the meantime, your spouse loses two to three years of building their career. It's a financial issue. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at in the legislature as well is to honor women veterans. Women veterans are the largest uh, population, growing population of veterans in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So lots of work needs to be done in the state legislature. But again, I want to thank you to your service, to your country. I also want to thank the family members right? Family members also make a huge sacrifice for our country. And all of you are bringing our country together. And I want to thank Joe Bevilacqua, Mike Bevilacqua, Sal, um, for hosting us here and being us here, and these gentlemen up here who work very hard to support our service members, and all our VSOs as well. God bless you, and thank you very much. And I want you to know that the, the Merrimack Valley Chamber doesn't just do this once a year. We're working with the veterans continually, working in conjunction with the SBA director, with the state officials to help veterans, their families on everything from education to business assistance to business financing to finding sites for businesses. And you'll actually hear from one veteran uh, on a video about the work of the Chamber of Commerce in helping veterans become entrepreneurs, and you'll hear from these gentlemen as well. Uh, although I wasn't a veteran, I'm the son of a disabled uh, World War II uh, veteran, um, I learned early on how important it was to support our veterans. And so much is dependent on the well-being of our veterans, those that serve us and those that are here each and every day. So we're going to hear from, I think, a very important speaker next, someone that I've known for a number of years who's been a friend of everyone, and you're going to hear from Francisco Urena, veteran, United States Marine Corps, and today's the Marine Corps birthday. Give him a round of applause. He is, as you know, the, the former Massachusetts Secretary of Veterans Affairs. He is the former veteran service officer to the cities of both Boston and Lawrence, and more importantly, he's a friend to everyone. Please welcome our friend, Francisco Urena. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. What a great honor it is to be here in Lawrence and Salvatore. You know, I, I look around and I remember uh, probably about a decade or, or so 
uh, driving around these same cities, the, this same uh, area, and what Salvatore's is now. And it's truly remarkable what the community has been able to come together, but it, it really is a focus of the leadership of people like Joe, people like Michael, and the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce, and everybody who has truly fortified uh, together the energies to come together. So good morning to our Gold Star families, good ladies and gentlemen, and of course our fellow veterans. As I mentioned, I want to thank uh, our elected officials uh, who are here, Representative Minicucci, Representative uh, Linda Dean Campbell, Rep Devers, uh, Sheriff Coppinger, and uh, the appointed officials as well, who truly uh, make it a, a focus of, of uh, synergy uh, in these communities. I want to thank our first responders that are here. I want to give them a round of applause to men and women of the Sheriff's Department, uh, Police Department, and so forth. You know, today, the, the, the job of first responders, of, of showing up to a scene of a crime or, or, or even a call, has been an extremely difficult one. And that has compounded with, with some of the discord that goes on in politics these days. But to these men and women who deserve to go home at the end of their shift, I want to thank them and I want to make sure that they get recognized and that we tell them we have uh, their support and, and we have their back. So thank you. A very special welcome uh, to Ms. Colasa Pichardo. Ms. Colasa is, as you all may know, and her family, the f uh, family of uh, Sergeant Johanny Rosario Pichardo uh, here of Lawrence. Lawrence's most recent uh, killed in action casualty uh, of the uh, war in Afghanistan. And to her and to her family, I want to say thank you. And so let's uh, stand and give them a great round of applause uh, for, for focus of recognition. <laughs> You know, by now you may know of Johanny's sacrifice and her story, and it is uh, events like today and with her presence that we are honored and humbled to be in. But also the, by doing so, we continue to remember Johanny's memory, her sacrifice, and also to uh, place a focus that her sacrifice will never be forgotten. So thank you. Let me take a moment of personal privilege as a Marine to uh, celebrate our Marine Corps birthday today. You know, 246 years ago on November 10th in a Tun Tavern bar in Philadelphia, uh, the Marine Corps birthday was born. And so to the Marines uh, here and everywhere, let me wish you uh, a happy, happy Marine Corps birthday. Thank you. Well, you know, we are Department of the Navy, and I'll leave it there. So thank you. <laughs> No, but uh, thank you very much. And, you know, it is a great honor to welcome all of the veterans and families here today and all of the supporters of veterans. Uh, we gather to appreciate you today and every day. You know, the experiences and the impacts of your contributions as veterans and your sacrifices, uh, you have protected our nation and you have made it stronger. When you raise your right hand and vow to defend and protect the Constitution of the United States, when you either commissioned or you were enlisted, uh, you did that in a sense of... A placing a focus on our liberties and our freedom. And because of your service, fellow Americans, we all enjoy those uh, freedoms and those liberties. Our country is facing uh, major challenges right now. You know, supply chain disruptions, labor shortages, and uh, discord in our political system, just to name a few. But the business community turns to veterans. And uh, Human Resources Department could turn to veterans to place a focus on hiring them and prioritizing to bring them on board, not just as a favor, but because veterans are good for the bottom line. The contributions of veterans go beyond their time and their service in uniform. Veterans are an, assets, are an asset to our community. Their leadership qualities, their workplace culture, their workplace ethic, the culture of teamwork is just, uh, just getting the job done. And that's just to name a few of the ways that veterans set the tone in and around the workplace. Veterans don't just stop serving when they take off their uniform and they can be returned back to communities. You know, we have veteran service officers past and present here today, people like Jamie Melendez and people like Tom Hargraves, a retired veteran service officer in the city of Matuan, veterans who continue to help veterans and place a focus in their transition at any phase of their lives. We must work to create more opportunities to empower veterans as they lead our country forward and to make our communities even greater. 
Today we will learn about a few stories of great veterans, both in business and small businesses and, and communities alike, making differences in uh, local uh, areas here, just like we have in Essex County and throughout uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. You know, tomorrow's Veterans Day, and it is a day that uh, our nation will pause to celebrate our service, your service as veterans in our contributions and your sacrifices. So let me uh, bid you uh, veterans a very happy Veterans Day. And I want to once again thank the Merrimack Valley Chamber for setting the tone time after time of uh, putting a focus uh, to veterans and veteran families, but also putting a focus for opportunities of how we could continue to better veterans and better our communities by incorporating them into the business section. So uh, Joe, Michael, and, and all who have uh, worked so hard to put together this event, thank you very much. God bless you all, and God bless those who are still serving. I think he deserves another round of applause. Like the video. I, I want to let you know that we've worked together so many years, and every single time that we've asked him for assistance to help our veterans or our community, he always says, yes, what do I need to do? When do you want me? And I'll be there. And I think he is absolutely tremendous. We look forward to working more with him as we develop uh, additional veterans. You're going to see additional veteran programs coming forward in 2022 in recognition of our commitment to help veterans that are returning and, as importantly, their families. So please stay tuned to our programming. And if you noticed, there's a Marine, Navy, Navy, and Marine. I had to separate them because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. But our next speaker is... Um, is uh, Yes, our next speaker is um, Salvatore DeFranco. He is the co-owner. Don't get up yet, Sal. Co-owner of Battlegrounds Coffee Company. He's a he's a veteran Navy SEAL. Uh, he's here with his lovely wife Dana, and uh, we're going to show a video. Sal is a member of our chamber board of directors, but he's also a veteran entrepreneur, as is every other speaker here. And the idea of trying to help veterans get into business and expand their business is something the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce board of directors is absolutely committed to. John Howard, who's, a, who's a, a Marine veteran, is a member of our board of directors, and John is on that mission as well, as is Sal, as is Cal, and I hope I don't miss any of the directors in the audience. But it's one of the issues that we have. We went to visit a company in the Andover just a couple days ago that makes this most unbelievable furniture. Veteran-owned manage, it's so intricate. We're going to continue to promote those types of programs, and when you hear the award recipient at the end, You'll be very impressed as well. So please pay attention, if you would, please look at the video. It's very brief, and then we'll ask Sal DeFranco to come up. My name is Salvatore DeFranco. My name is Dana DeFranco, and we're the co owners of Battlegrounds Coffee Company. And, and this, this is, is our, our chamber story. story. When my wife and I first decided that we were going to create Battlegrounds, we did it with the intention of becoming kind of the cultural, business, political epicenter of Haverhill, Massachusetts. Building and maintaining relationships, not just with the organizations throughout the city, but with the individual, your customer, is incredibly important. I mean, Dana's phenomenal at building those one-on-one -on -one relationships within the cafe. I love meeting people, interacting with them, remembering what they order, remembering their names, how their day was, because it does, it means a lot to us. Yeah. As Battlegrounds has seen success and we've been able to grow uh, rather quickly, I can confidently say that that growth would not have taken place nearly as quickly as it has without the help of the Chamber. We wanted to develop our company around the concept of service. I served in the United States Navy SEAL teams from 2004 to 2010. All of the men in Dana's family served in the military. Service is something that runs deep within our family, it's something that's very important to us. That's why we have so much respect for the Chamber. We see their commitment to service every day, whether that's service to their community, service to their members. They're always working for you. They're always looking out for your best interest. Joe and Michael will be your biggest cheerleaders. They are incredibly dedicated to the success of your company. Dana and I are the type of people, we're not relying on someone else to do it for us. So we said, we're going to build this, we're going to do it. And we did. And we're here to stay. We are definitely here to stay.
Let me, um, be, be, before we ask um, Sal DeFranco to uh, speak, I also want to recognize Tony Lopez. Tony, you're in the room somewhere, way back there. Tony's also a member of our board of directors, committed to working with our veterans. Give him a round of applause as well. And I want to tell you a story about veterans, if I would, before Sal gets up. Sal opened with Dana a new facility in Newburyport. They put an American flag out front. Unfortunately, someone vandalized the flag. Not only did the veteran community come together, but the community in general from around New England came together and came down and visited. And that shows you the respect people have for veterans and veteran activities. Please welcome Sal DeFranco. Hello? Hello? Yes, Hello? Speak into it. Everybody can hear me? Yeah. Well, uh, congratulations to the U.S. Marine Corps. It was 246 years yeah, right. ago that the Navy gave birth to our, <laughs> <laughs> to our sometimes troubled uh, child. Um, no, but it, as a Navy man, uh, I appreciate the Marine Corps uh, more than I could ever express. They're an incredible organization. Um, you will never meet uh, a person from any company, any small business, big business, any organization that's more proud of what they do than a Marine. Uh, they're an incredible group of men and women, and we could not be, uh, I could not be proud, prouder to have worked with them, uh, to, have, to have watched them from afar, and to, been, uh, to have been shoulder to shoulder with them in combat. They're incredible. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, you know, a lot of times, I, I, I think this is the fourth year in a row doing this, um, you know, a lot of times we'll talk about how important it is to kind of hire veterans in the, work, in the workforce, right? All the skills that they bring to the table, um, how desirable they are, and they truly are, right? You think of a veteran, you know, you know they're going to show up on time. It's the soft skills, right? It's those small things. You know they're going to act appropriately for the most part. Uh, <laughs> they're going to wear the right uniform, right? They're going to be respectful. But... Today, I'd kind of like to talk a little bit about, you know, what veteran businesses are doing to kind of support the veteran community. And so I want to share with you um, a little story. So recently, uh, I was hired by Newburyport Bank to create a veteran banking program by uh, Lloyd Ham, the, the CEO of Newburyport Bank. He came to me and he said, you know, I believe that the veteran community within this region is underserved, and I want to be the premier kind of institution that offers veteran services and, 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 pro, and products. So he brings me on board, and I helped to create this veteran banking program. Well, out of that, it started to grow into something a little bit more, and luckily, through the veteran network, right, that, that and, and this is really kind of the most Im, Im, important part you can kind of, um, part of the story. It's through that veteran network within the business community that I was able to achieve what I'm going to speak, speak of. So um, is anybody familiar with Dick George? Yeah, Dick George is fantastic. He's a 101st Airborne vet. He went, through, he went through Airborne School in the 50s. He was jumping out of planes in the 50s. I did not know they had planes in the 50s. <laughs> right. You so weren't even born in the 50s. I wasn't born in the 50s. My parents weren't born in the 50s. Um, and so I was here. You were here. Thank God. And so Dick George is this, this, just this huge veteran advocate, and he was able to put me in touch with Home Base. And is anybody here familiar with Home Base? Home Base is the, is the Red Sox Foundation that specializes in veteran mental health. They are the world's best program when it comes to dealing with mental health. Just recently, the U.S., uh, the commander of the uh, Special Operations Command put through 80-something active duty Navy SEALs from Damnak, the, what, what the, most of the public knows as SEAL Team 6, active duty SEALs through this program. Because right now the government, the, the U.S. military is really trying to get ahead of the mental health crisis that's affecting our veterans. Where in the past, it was, the, the military was dealing with these things after the veterans separated, right? So your support structure had been destroyed, you were out on your own, and that's when these mental health crises occurred, and the VA, as it's structured right now, is not able to deal with this pandemic. We have two pandemics, right? COVID and mental health. And the mental health crisis 
affecting veterans, in my opinion, is the most important one that we need to deal with right now. So I was able to get put in touch with um, home base. And out of that, we came to the conclusion that Newburyport Bank would create a financial wellness program to work with the home base program. So veterans that are going through this mental health program have the option to opt into a financial wellness program because we all know how closely tied your financial health is to your mental health. Um, and just to kind of expand on this veteran network, right, this veteran connection of veterans looking out for veterans, Adam Hogue and his company, I w I'm, I'm lucky enough to know this incredible man over here, if anybody has any uh, financial uh, advisement needs, he's your guy. He came on board and we're working together to develop this program. So it kind of just shows you how incredible the veteran business community is, is that we're not just looking out for ourselves, looking to make a buck, oh, you know, how can we grow our business? Of course you are, right? You're in business. But what always comes first is that veteran community. We're always looking out for each other. We're always raising hands. Does anybody need help? I'm here to support you. Is there anything I can do? How can I help make your business better? Because that's what veterans are. They're always looking out for each other and they're always supporting each other. And I think that speaks, too, to the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce. They are always here to support you. We are always here to help you. If you have a question, I'm sure there's one of us here on the board or one of our members that can help answer it. So with that, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for your sacrifice. Words can't describe what your daughter meant to us and what she meant to this country. It was an honor. It was an absolute honor for her to serve. And so thank you, everybody, for coming. And I want to pass it on to Me. Joe. Thank you, sir. And I think Sal is absolutely right. There is a network of veterans that are members of our Merrimack Valley Chamber that are here to help you in any way, shape, or manner, men and women who, are, who served, who continue to serve their community, and who continue to serve one another. And so please take advantage of the opportunities we present. Uh, the Chamber does free business counseling uh, at the Chamber Building with the Mass um, Small Business Development Centers uh, in English or Spanish. We also do, um, through our Women in Business Program, mentoring that women, uh, own women veterans who have come back, as well as um, businesses of literally all types. And we want to say thank you. I'm, I'm looking in the audience at some of the business people that not only establish the business, but have expanded. Mike Malvis from, uh, with his uh, company just keeps growing and growing and growing. Um, you heard about Adam, you know, the credit union, Merrimack Valley Credit Union, keep reaching out for more programs and more services. It's just amazing the types of programs and companies that we have and the ambassadors that are here from that. So we want to say thank you. Uh, we're now going to go um, to uh, Louis Yepes. Uh, we're going to do another Navy person, and then we're going to end with a Marine, uh, if that's okay. So Lou um, has been a longtime member of the Merrimack Valley Chamber, a longtime business person. He is the COO of Mainstream Global and has not only grown in his company, literally I remember when Lou bought the building across the way, we actually had um, former Senator John Kerry here for a uh, program uh, in this room, very room at the time of um, the big floods and, and, and the disaster that we had up here and Lou was literally looking at that building across the way, remember that Lou? And uh, had purchased that building and has started a career not only in, with the, uh, commu with the uh, computer business that he's in, but also with the real estate. And his business has grown and grown and grown. Another example of a great veteran helping not only himself, his own business, his employees, but a continual assistant to the community. He is a Navy commander retired and a friend of ours. Please welcome Louis Yepes. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming out. Uh, good morning to our Gold Star family. Uh, happy birthday to our Marine Corps brothers, Ura. Um, I'll be brief in terms of my comments. Um, uh, we have had su success uh, with the company in Mainstream Global. This year, we turned uh, 21. Uh, uh, we started off with a $300,000 loan and currently operate in seven countries uh, with uh, self-owned and um, uh, operated facilities overseas, uh, and also have um, uh, redeveloped some, some properties here in Lawrence. Uh, so when asked, uh, Joe said, hey, could you share uh, a couple things in terms of what uh, has helped in terms of your success? Um, I'll, I'll touch on two things. Uh, one that I'll call uh, 
emotional intelligence. Um, there's an aspect in terms of either in business or in uniform or even in our personal lives uh, where challenges come before us um, and they're going to be there uh, that any business is going to face. I think the SBA puts out a number that 90% uh, of businesses are going to fail in their first year and those 10% that make it, 90% um, of those won't make it to five years. So what differentiates the ones that do and don't? And much of it is in terms of the outlook of how you look at the obstacles that come before you, or as I view them as the opportunities that come before you. Uh, many of us uh, end up finding and creating these roadblocks uh, for ourselves because of life as, as happens in the course of business. Difficulties will be, in, uh, will be brought before you. Uh, and success of that company or success uh, in, in an individual will determine and be based on how you're looking at these things and taking them on. Uh, challenges in terms of whether here in the U.S. or expanding overseas uh, have been significant or in uniform. And one of those aspects is how have we been able to take a look at those and handle those in a way and view them in terms of opportunities instead of uh, roadblocks that can't be overcome. The second, piece, uh, the second piece to this, and it's, um, it, it's very much in terms of how, when in uniform, of how we are. Uh, there's no question that, you know, when we were serving in uniform, you know that the guy next to you or the gal to your right, uh, we shared the same mission. We shared the same values. It was one team, one fight. And that same aspect in terms of how do you convert that to your customers, in terms that I'm going to share that, your mission, and make it mine. How am I going to make, uh, I'm going to say, your problems or my opportunities mine? And changing that aspect for your customer to end up feeling that you really are working shoulder to shoulders with them uh, ends up creating a relationship that's very deep, it's very personal, uh, and ends up creating long-term relationships that when there's an issue at any of our clients, um, and I jokingly say, I want the first name that comes out of your mouth when you've got a problem to be mainstream global. Um, or you, you have an imaginary red phone that's on your desk. It doesn't have any buttons on it, but you pick that thing up and it calls my cell. That's the kind of commitment that gets developed uh, where you all of a sudden have these companies, customers, uh, that will end up saying, that's who I want to be working with. That's the company that I want working with us to solve these problems. Uh, so my comments are short. Um, I hope they, they help. And uh, thank you very much for coming out. Thank you. That was great. Thank you so much. And I think you can see from Lewis's comments, you know, why veteran businesses are successful. Because they've taken the, what they've learned in the military, they've taken their uh, partnership of working together, and they've taken the discipline, and they've made successful businesses. Uh, how many people do you now employ? 150. Give them a round of, another round of applause. I was just thinking that um, next year we'll have an Army man up here. My father fought under MacArthur, so he was in the Army. So I just realized that we have two Navy members and two uh, Marines. And our next speaker is a proud Marine. He reminds me all the time when the Marine Corps birthday is. Every year I get a reminder of that. Um, he is Cal Williams. He is the Merrimack Valley Director of the United Way. And together with the United Way and with Tom Raisha, the um, uh, uh, Merrimack Valley Central Labor Council, the Chamber and the Council and United Way have hosted seven or eight food drives, diaper drives in the Merrimack Valley, helping people in need. Another example of a veteran who never stops giving back to the community. Please welcome Cal Williams and wish him his birthday again, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, just to take a little cue off what uh, Francisco stated, that the Marines, uh, only the Marines get started in a bar. Okay, so <laughs> many days I wrote home to my mom and says, I don't know if I can hang with these guys because they drank me under the table, but I made it. Um, seriously, uh, thank you for coming today. Uh, uh, basically, I just want to go over a few things about Veterans Day. What is the true meaning of Veterans Day? It's the definition of veterans. Uh, day, November 11th, set aside in commemoration of the end of the hostilities in 1918 
and in 1945, and observe a legal holiday in the U.S. to honor the veterans of our armed forces. That's one day out of 365 days to honor veterans, okay, and their families. We ask, if you're a vet or a family member, why is every day as a, as a Veterans Day? Why is every day? Why do you ask? Let me break it down. Many veterans are still having acute physical health problems from wounds and amputations, trauma-based mental health issues like depression, PDSD, homelessness, food insecurities, unemployment, hearing loss, cancer from pit burns, Agent Orange, Agent Orange, and now COVID-19 is running rampant within our ranks. Veteran suicide rate is unacceptable. Sadly, veterans comprise nearly a quarter of suicides in the United States. Caused, caused by anger, rage, mood swings, depression, episodes of anxiety, agitation, expressing feeling of having no reason to live, increased alcohol and substance abuse, self-destructive and risky behavior like driving while impaired, and lastly, serving multiple deployments in Afghanistan and Iraq. The VA is still today struggling with a lack of accountability and inability to properly manage a budget rapidly approaching $200 billion, $200 billion and failing to provide veterans with timely access to care and benefits. We must, as a just society, we have to do better. We need to do better. We can do better. Failure is not an option. One day a year out of 365, trust me, if you're a veteran or a veteran family member, every day is Veterans Day. In closing, to all my veteran brotherhood brothers, thank you for your service and congratulations on the job well done. We um, have created a very special award this year. We all heard about the tragedy that occurred with the loss of a Lawrence native's lives. I spoke to our friend Francisco and said, we have an idea. How can we pay tribute to this lovely woman who gave her life for all of us? Working with our committee, with Sal and Cal and a few other people, Sal Lapoli, we thought we would create an annual award, which is named the U.S. Marine Corps Sergeant Johanny Rosario Pachada Memorial Award. It will be presented every year at our veterans program. We have not yet publicly announced the name of the recipient, although he is in the room. And it wasn't simply a person that you would hear from on a regular basis. It's someone who the committee believed went above and beyond duty, who went above and beyond communication with community, assisting fellow veterans, and simply being the type of person that a veteran is. We came up with a person, and let me tell you briefly a bit of the background. And then we're going to ask Francisco to invite a family member up, present this award. And again, this is the most solemn event I think our chamber has done in the years that I've been here. Because it truly was a tragedy that should not have happened. But we never want to forget. And that's one thing that I ask you all to join me in never forgetting our veterans. And as Cal mentioned, every day. So let me tell you briefly about the military experience of this um, award recipient for this year. A U.S. Navy CB from 2002 and 2005 participated in the Global War on Terrorism campaign. This company was established in 2007 and currently holds an active customer base of 15,000 commercial and residential accounts in the New England area. They've delivered 24 million gallons of fuel oil and fuel propane to their commercial and residential customers in 2020 alone. They are known nationwide for their emergency response services in which they provide emergency fuel and backup power solutions to disaster areas. Their most recent notable deployment was right here in the Merrimack Valley during the gas explosion. They had taken on the response to provide 24-7 emergency fuel and logistics to over 500 generators that were placed for Merrimack Valley businesses and residences 
as their temporary power and heating source and literally their only source. Their team served this mission for 110 days consecutive, consecutively until power and heat were restored to all those affected. They now hold several contracts across the nation and have branded their trusted service as Broco Priority One Emergency Response Team. Last year, their Priority One team was called on ahead of Hurricane Laura to stage and deploy their services to the city of Lake Charles, Louisiana, which took a direct hit. Their team was tasked to fuel the city's critical infrastructure, which included the wastewater treatment plants, pumping stations, and all the local hospitals. They provided the fuel to keep the hospitals operating. Their team was deployed for three months until the mission was complete and power was restored. This year, the company is serving in New Orleans and the southern cities of Louisiana in the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. When the country needs emergency help, they call Broco Oil, Broco Energy now. Their company takes great pride in serving those in need, and it all starts with a culture that was ingrained in, in Bob Brown during military service. The Merrimack Valley Chamber wants to welcome all veterans, but today we welcome the first annual recipient of the Sergeant Johanny Rosario Pachada Memorial Award, Robert Brown. Please come forward. Do you want us to remember the family? Please stand. I hope that was all right. Watch the wire. So we have the family will make the presentation to Robert Brown. Do you want to introduce the family member? Yes. So with me today, I have uh, Mrs. Colossa Pichardo, the mother of Johanny um, Pichardo, and this is the plaque here from the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce, the U.S. Marine Corps Sergeant Johanny Rosario Pichardo Memorial Award presented to Robert Brown, United States Navy CB veteran, Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce annual veteran recognition, November 10th, 2021, signed by Joseph Bevilacqua, President, and Salvatore Lopoli, Chairman. Thank you so much. And we'd like to have uh, Robert Brown just say a few words, if you'd like. Just watch out for the wire. And it takes great courage for the family to be here today. I just want to thank everybody for this uh, humbled honor. Uh, we, I am truly humbled and honored to be the recipient of this award. And, uh, you know, this has hit home for everybody here, especially the veterans. But Johanny's memory and legacy will live on through this award. And we will never forget her sacrifice and service to this great country. And thank you all very much for giving me this honor, which doesn't feel very deserved, but I'll take it, and thank you very much. Please give the family a round of applause, please. That concludes our program. We want to also thank Lawrence Community Access Television for uh, taping this program. It will be distributed throughout the cable networks throughout the Merrimack Valley. We also want to thank the sheriff once again, Gretchen and all the, uh, the honor guard. Thank you so much. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> well, we also have citations from uh, Senator Zoglio's office and from Congresswoman Trahan's office for you as well. We want to say thank you to the elected officials that were here, Representative Campbell and Representative Minicucci, and also to our police chief and all the public service first responders. And a special thank you to the veteran service agents and officers that are here today because they work daily to help our veterans. So give them all a round of applause if you would. Thank you to our speakers. I thought it was a diverse panel of, of, of interest. It shows you what veterans in business can do. Again, not helping just themselves, but helping the communities on a continual basis and helping those by providing employment and opportunity. And when disaster calls, as you heard about Mr. Brown's company, they call a veteran-owned business. So thank you to our sponsors. Uh, John Howard uh, doesn't know this yet, but he's a speaker next year. Uh, he was too quiet today. He'll be one of our speakers next year, and you'll see another program um, 
about this time next year once again in recognition of our veterans. If the Merrimack Valley Chamber can help you in any way, shape, or manner, please don't hesitate to call. Thank you to our police force, our members who are here as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and don't forget, every day, thank a veteran. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>